and we're live. I'm eating kind of off camera because I didn't have time to eat before the stream. They don't care. And anyone who does care doesn't need to be here. Food. <laughs> tell him, guys. Tell him he can eat on camera and that that loser who got mad last time he ate obviously doesn't know what it's like to, to be a real person. I just want to slop my food down and be done. This is wet, loud food. Sloppy steaks. Sloppy steaks. I can't say the other line. What are they going to do? Keep you from ordering a glass of water? Hi, guys. It's been a weird day. It's been a very uh, weird day today. This candle smells really weird when you're eating tomato-flavored tuna. What, the Friday Bean? Mm -hmm. Guys, the Friday Bean collection is available now. Elf Adapt Shop is down below. The... We haven't sold any of the candles yet. That's the only thing I think well, we haven't really sold. No, but Smarklow's been selling, ain't she? Got... Them. They. They. It is they, because if it is a combination of you and I, then it would be they. So the Ugly Bean mug, that hideous thing that he designed like three weeks ago live, um, that mug is, well, it was available last Friday for 24 hours, and then I said, get it out of my shop, it's hideous, um, and Amber and I deactivated it, and then a bunch of you were really upset because you missed out because we only made it available 24 hours, and you been Cam mentioning it all week and he's been mentioning it all week camel hair camel hair camel hair camel hair what are you what are you talking about you talking about my hair but anyway um yeah so so ugly bean has been put back for the weekend and after that we're booting the ugly bean out of the shop because no more ugly bean it's so ugly i don't know why you guys wanted it back it haunts my dreams. It's the idi the hide the most hide the hideous the hideous the, hideous thing the, the most hideous most hideous thing that I've ever seen. But if you really want it, link is down below. We are gonna leave it up until probably Sunday night, and then we're gonna deactivate it. So, ma'am, I changed the lights from a natural tone to a white tone, and we are so bright. <clears throat> How are we looking? How are we sounding? Y'all ready to start the stream or what? Y'all ready for this? Doo, 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 doo. Oh, wait. I'll, I'll get in trouble if I... Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. You're going to get us friggin' demonetized. Banned, demonetized. Guys, today we're going to be looking at trends. This is not our holiday trend report. We did one early holiday trend report. We did. Um, And it's available on the channel. It's it like is. a couple weeks ago. And we're going to do another one that's more closely related when we, like, see the actual Christmassy trends start emerging. It's a little early for that to see what the gift trends are going to be. But E-Rank got some brand new data and not the normal data that we always get. I had the opportunity to talk to Anthony about some potential platforms that we would like to have some data for and i wasn't allowed to uh to say anything while that was all taking place but i have a red bubble shop that you guys aren't allowed to know about because i'm testing with it uh -huh. if, if i tell you what it is then it'll mess up the test but i've, I've been experimenting with red bubble um i you guys know that i love target for finding trends and i asked anthony could we get some data for like uh red bubble Target, he was able to get Depop, which Etsy recently bought, um, and a couple other platforms. So basically what we're going to do today is check these out. I really didn't give myself a lot of time to like dig into them and explore. Nope. So this will kind of be like a first impressions thing because he literally just posted about these new uh, and exciting sets of data so we're gonna jump in to that mm -hmm. and this is really an opportunity to use some of these things not just for your products but for your marketing as well and i hope to share a couple ideas with you on that too uh we're not gonna be able to stream as long as we normally do today we've got a meeting at our kiddos school uh so we'll need to be done by well i guess i guess like no i guess I'd like little... to, i'd like to have a few minutes to to get ready so like 115 yeah, yeah. So about an, about an hour from now. Yeah. So you want to, let's see, what do we see? They said, uh, I was cut off working on a new Kippa deep purple camel hair, uh, hand dyed by me, first time dying. Oh. Uh, 
I just thought you were coming in here like memeing us. hair. That sounds like something you could like run into a restaurant yelling and run out and really confuse people here. Just run, camel hair. And camel hair. Run out. <laughs> Sloppy steaks. Sloppy steaks. Have you guys watched uh, I Think You Should Leave? If you haven't watched I Think You Should Leave and you're into like weird avant-garde comedy, you should really check it out. It's it's pretty good. Not with the kids in the room. Though. Not with the kids in the room. Yeah, no, it's definitely not. Not so, It's so funny. It's things you watch this show and you think that it's going to have a point and then it slowly stops having a point and you're trying to follow it. And then you realize that you can't because it's not supposed to have anything to follow. But All anyway, right. on to things. Are we doing target first? Or? No, we're going to do E rank first because I E rank first. Make sure you don't type in without switching. And then here we go. All right, guys. Uh, for those who don't know, I am on the management team at erank.com. However, I do not get paid to recommend it. Figure out what you're doing. I get in a kitty. Distracting me. Um, this is an erank pro membership. This is the one that I use for Alpha Dapt. Um, you'll notice that we have four spelling issues because erank doesn't know that Starla is a name. So that's <laughs> fun. Yeah, Tina said uh, Redbubble's naughty when it comes to copyright. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be really careful because in, in, in here, a lot of the data is going to give you copyright terms. So just make sure that when you're looking at anything, it doesn't matter if it's trending. That just means that people are searching for it. It does not mean that it's safe to make it. There are, there are always things trending. Like I think that uh, Game of Thrones is trending on Etsy again right now for some reason. Uh, because House of the Dragon. Yeah, House of the Dragon. Yeah. Just getting its thing. So from your E-Rank screen, assuming that you have a pro or basic membership, because you're going to need one of those in order to see this data or all of it, I think you'll get a sample of it if you have a free membership, but you won't get all of it. Um, you're going to want to go into trends and go into the trend buzz. Trend report. buzz. And now you'll see that we have a bunch of new marketplaces. So the first thing, we'll go ahead and look at Etsy. Uh, you'll also notice something else that's a little newer. You can actually toggle to see where in the world people are searching for certain things. So right now we're going to look at the U.S. I believe that the U.S. makes up over, is it over 80% of Etsy's It's going to be a majority. Yeah, over 80%. Uh, and usually when we see trends emerging in the U.S., they're going to be pretty consistent everywhere. So the U.S. is making up a majority of the data poll. Therefore, it's going to have the, the most data. So uh, top things that are being searched for, um, this is top searches yesterday, were gifts. So gifts, guys. People are already gift shopping. This, The fact that they're typing in gifts, that means that they don't quite know what it is that they're looking for, but they're looking to be inspired. They're looking for ideas. Uh, and then we've got Halloween, Halloween adult costume, uh, storage and organization. So people are trying to get probably their, you know, it's starting to get cooler out in some places. I know it's starting to get cooler in Ohio. I'm sure that people are trying to start, you know, straightening up and getting ready, getting the house in order for, for the holidays. Uh, Game of Thrones is trending. Once again, don't, don't do Game of Thrones, even if it is. Handmade jewelry, bridesmaid gift, Halloween jewelry, fall, Halloween couple costume, personalized gifts, Personalized is always going to be popular right before the holidays. Absolutely. And uh, I'm seeing mostly Halloween weddings and gifts. Weddings, I'm not surprised with either. Especially fall after big. Well, COVID last year, fall weddings are going to be huge this year. Because it was also a very hot summer, for at least for us. 70s vintage lamp. That's interesting. So these are just the top searches. You can kind of see if they've gone up in search. Uh... If they've started to go down, if they're like really hot and they're highly searched, you can also do past seven days to compare. Gifts is still staying right on top for everybody's like, how, when do people start gift shopping? They're, they're already on it. They are already shopping. Then we do past 14 days. Gifts come in at, uh, at number two. So that's interesting. Let's see what the UK data looks like. That mirrors. Yes, yeah, mirrors. Let's um, because they're probably bit. having a hard time seeing this anyway. Oh, thank you. Now I can see it. Yeah. Now people will be able to see it. Oh, let's. Oh, nope. There we go. That's good. Right there. There you go. Hopefully, you guys can see that a little bit better now. Personal event. 
smart object mock-up. So that sounds like other sellers. Ghibli, I'm assuming like Studio Ghibli. Yeah, the... Studio Ghibli's popular right now. I, I forget Fantasy. why. Final Fantasy 14 specifically is really huge right now because a bunch of streamers are getting into it. But don't touch those those copyright terms. Yeah, Square Enix is going to take their fame and run with it for the time being. So best to avoid that with the ten foot pole. You can definitely tell that the that the Halloween trend is uh, very exclusively U.S. We're crazy about Halloween in the U.S. Not so much in some of the other areas. Um, mm -hmm. Canada though, Canada Halloween barware is number two. Wall decals. STIM. I'm, I imagine that's probably for cars. I think that it's um S or a band. No, guys, remind me what STI. I think that they're some type of digital file type thing. Let me know because I'm I might be wrong. Lots of Halloween, you know, kind of popping up. Not as much as in the U.S. though, and not as many gifts. Tarantula enclosures is number twelve. What are y'all? What are y'all doing? Hey. What are y'all doing in Canada? Well, let's just uh, I'll switch faces off. Ain't no reason to have that on there. Okay, that's fine. All right, so Amber <laughs> said herpes. Not <laughs> people be trying to get herpes on Etsy. I don't think you can buy buy. Okay, man, buy people herpes. in Australia love BTS, don't they? Apparently, artisan keycaps. Anybody in Australia tell us is there a is there a BTS craze going on in Australia? Amber, look. If you want to target your Australian market, personalized pet print is trending right now. Just said STL is a 3D model, but that wasn't STL. That was STI. Yeah, it was STI. Ex-boyfriend birthday card. What are you guys doing, Australia? <clears throat> We've got, let's see, is it Germany? Yeah. Uh, Germany, large gold earring. Sir, I'm just looking to see if there's any... Got a bunch of really angry words. Bunch and Dunkelgrun! You are... That was the... German word. is the angriest language, I, I swear. I'm having to brush up on my German because I'm writing a... Kinsenblumenkrantz! Uh, I'm writing a Jinglish <laughs> character in the book that I'm writing, so I've had to brush up on my German dialect a little bit. Not anything... Really Halloween, though, which is interesting. Let's check France. Envelopes. Handmade jewelry is trended on all in all countries that we have data for. Beach Boy shirt? All right, I know that there is at least one of you here in France right now. Let us know. We want to know why Beach Boy shirt. Is there something something trending there that we're not familiar with but slow down Nobody testosterone can confusing all right well let's pop back to the u.s that's gonna large gold earrings are on trend with runways now okay oh, okay at least the u.s and uk were relatively predictable all the other countries seem to be uh losing their noodles a little bit <laughs> All right, guys, so this is the data that we've always had access to. We've always been able to see what's trending on Etsy. But now let's dive into some of the categories that we recently got. So Amazon Handmade. Katana. Katana. Woo! Halloween decor, Halloween decorations, fall decorations. Look, there's another gift term, <laughs> gifts for women. Um, Katana, I'm not surprised with the whole, like, Asian ancient aesthetic that's going on. I, I keep getting advertised. It's starting to get really big. It's probably people trying to dress up for Halloween. I, w I would hope that that's not the reason why. I would hope that it's more that there's interest in the culture and that it's not just like a... <laughs> like a, Amazon. Well, that's true. It is Amazon, so... <laughs> it's either it's either people that want to feel cool or people that are trying to dress up. It doesn't have anything to do with the culture. We're, we're, we do not support this message. We are simply the messengers of the message. Right. <laughs> um, let's see. Soap molds was popular yesterday eyelashes handmade earrings halloween decor lots of halloween and birthday so we're seeing some consistent things look here guys christmas pajamas um pocket knives and marvel movies should be too 
Marvel's kind of losing its steam because people are getting sick of it. Yeah, it's they're they've been hitting it hard for a couple years. Couple years, like like fifteen straight years now. Amazon, you know, this is not data that I'm really interested in. Um, it it might be interesting to go through and just just to see toilet paper, just to see what people eggs. Eggs. You can grocery shop on Amazon. Ah, uh, gotcha. Um, nothing here that as an Etsy seller I particularly yeah, almost almost uh, yeah PS five yeah. None of that's really going to be... Um, Depop, I know a couple of our alphas sell on Depop. It's kind of like a, you know, sell sell your old stuff that you don't want anymore market. But Etsy owns it, so it's relevant. We've got eBay. We've got Facebook Marketplace. I thought that was pretty interesting. But again, it's mostly terms where people are trying to get things local in their area. Dresser, couch, coffee table, desk, free... Um, Mostly furniture and cars. Um, let's do Pinterest. Pinterest is the one that I'm more interested in because these can help us to advertise. Any other pet stuff? These are just trends. We don't have control over this. This is just yep, stuff you gotta, that people are searching for. Yep. You got to do a little bit of digging in yourself and see if there's anything uh, anything related to, to your industry for these. We'll talk a little bit more about how to apply some of these later. But I just want to get a good look at what's trending and then we'll talk about how we can apply them. So Halloween is big on Pinterest. This is people trying to find ideas, fall nail ideas, fall fall outfits, uh, dinner ideas, dinner recipes, because, you know, Pinterest isn't really a shopping platform. So you have to consider what people are thinking when they're searching for these things. So fall aesthetic, this might be how somebody wants to decorate their home for fall. They might type in fall aesthetic into Pinterest to get some ideas. But if you sell something like fall candles, wouldn't it be a cool idea to do a fall aesthetic photo similar to how we did the Friday bean photo with the candle uh, couple weeks ago where I added in the coffee mug and the coffee beans and the pumpkins and the wooden table. And I made this really aesthetically pleasing image. But what I was ultimately advertising was the candle. You can mock these up. You can take the photo yourself, maybe somewhere around in your home. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you sell. You could create a fall aesthetic with it. And then Use the word fall aesthetic in your pin to attract people to that listing. Same with nails. You know, fall nails, maybe you make um, maybe you make necklaces or something and you take a photo of yourself holding the necklace in your hand, but you've got your fall nails done and you can use the word fall nails in your pin. That way people see the nails and they're like, wow, those are really pretty, but what's she holding? And then they start to see your... Uh, they start to see the thing that you're holding, whether it be, you know, maybe it's a mug for sale, maybe it's a necklace. So a lot of these trends aren't things that you need to personally make. You don't need to make fall nails to use tr a trend like that in your marketing. We just want to make sure that we are being trendy in our marketing so that it catches people's eyes. That should be our objective. Same with like, crock pot recipes for example if you make spoon rests it would be really cool for you to make like a, a board of different crock pot recipes but then you take the photos with your spoon rests like right next to the crock pot and you could advertise them in that way Patera said try kipling it keeps coming up as a search term kipling is a brand oh is it kipling is a brand that makes like handbags book bags Stuff like that. Mm. Okay. Same, see, like Halloween aesthetic, fall fashion. This is going to be like outfit ideas. We we also saw fall outfits 2021. If you make scarves or hats or gloves, and you can apply this to winter too. Think about the fact that in a few weeks, people are going to switch out the word fall for winter outfits 2021. Get ahead on these trends. If you make beanies, scarves, jackets sweaters, uh, anything like that, you could make pins with you or a model wearing a full fall or winter outfit. And then you could have the link to buy whatever it is that you make included with that. And then you'll fit right in and give, you'll be giving an outfit idea and you'll be advertising. Look, room ideas aesthetic. Do you make any type of wall decor or things like that? 
You could take a photo of, of, of it or just do a mock-up with some of your decor and use the, uh, use the keyword room ideas aesthetic. It's on the porch. I'll be right back. Oh, do you? Okay. Business casual outfits for women. There's so many cool ideas here. Harry Styles concert outfit ideas. You cannot sell a Harry Styles t-shirt in your Etsy shop, but if you make a cool outfit and maybe maybe you're wearing a Harry Styles shirt, but you've got a cool like flashy scarf because you know, Harry Styles, he's like, he always wears super flashy outfits. Maybe you make crazy leggings or crazy scarf or a crazy hat. And you're wearing, a, you can buy a Harry Styles t-shirt and you wear that, but you're advertising your crazy leggings. On Pinterest, you could totally use the keywords Harry Styles concert outfit ideas because it's trending. And never, you know, you don't ever have to put Harry Styles into your Etsy listing. You're not hitting any like copyright infringements. You're just advertising that your cool leggings that are colorful and crazy would fit. This is a really cool idea on how to like ride a trend in an intelligent way without making the product, you know, and I'm sure that there are some of you who make something that could go cool at a Harry Styles concert. You already make it. You just never realized that you could advertise it as a Harry Styles concert outfit idea until now. Are you guys starting to kind of get the gears turning and, and figuring out how you can use some of these ideas for your own advertising? Let's do a little bit more here. College Halloween costume ideas. This might be fun for if you make some Halloween jewelry, start getting some pins on Pinterest. I recommend watching the Canva episode of the Friday Bean that we did a couple weeks ago uh, in the Instagram Reels uh, Friday Bean episode. That Instagram Reels actually is really, really useful for Pinterest because Pinterest allows you to do short videos as well. And videos are always going to be more eye-catching than photos. Let's see. And, and like I said, keep in mind that pretty soon it's going to be college Christmas uh, outfit ideas. These are all just going to shift based on the season. What else do we have? Desktop wallpaper aesthetic. I'm trying to... Festival outfits. Look at that. This was hot yesterday. So if you make any type of outfits, skirts, shirts, jewelry, bangles, gemstones, think about like music festivals, think about, uh, you know, all, all different type of festival shows that are going to take place in the fall. And even Renfest, if you make anything kind of like fantasy, medieval, you could totally do the festival outfits and use these on Pinterest. Festivals are going to be big this year. Our Red Fest just opened up a few weeks ago. Yes. Um. Let's see. Welcome back. I'm back. I'm an idiot. It was on, the, uh, you brought it in. I did not realize that you had brought it in and I went out there and I was like, there's no package out here. Oh yeah, it was on I was like, table. where is my expensive controller at? Sorry. Um. Let's see. Character design. Why don't you do that later? Because you're doing everything and I have nothing to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna... I'm just sitting here quiet as crap anyway. I'm just plugging it in. Brown aesthetic. That's different. Lots of good ideas here for Pinterest. Guys, dive into these. Uh, we only have U.S. data for Pinterest, but you can see what was hot yesterday on Pinterest. You can see what was hot over the last seven days. Uh, you can see what's remained hot over the past 14 days. There's all kind of, Mark, he's remained hot over the past 14 days. Day 15 was a little rough, but the past 14 days, he's been good. Um, That's true. Redbubble, yeah, this is kind of hard because Redbubble is going to have a lot of terms that you cannot use. That's why we have, I don't know if you noticed these big giant warnings on A lot of people don't. Make sure that you're looking at these. Make sure you're looking at these, too. They're different on every page. Uh, I wrote most of them. <laughs> um, but let's see. Crypto, cryptocurrency. Actually, that trend's probably going to fall pretty soon since crypto's going through a bit of a strug right now. Um, yeah, well, you know. Halloween is big on Redbubble. Skulls. We got to avoid so many memes 
butterfly sticker, coffee, hats. But yeah, this is like half anime. <laughs> it is. Lo-fi, memes. Wow. A lot of these you could not Video use. games. Berserk popping back up. That must mean there's news on Berserk. Um, I think it's just the the creator passing away, probably. Yeah. Wow. That's true. I wasn't even thinking about that. Can't even like use hardly any of these. That's insane. Um, for those who don't know, Redbubble is a you you can scoot it to us for a minute. I'm really not surprised in the least, though. No, oh. I can't because our camera's frozen like it usually is. That's okay. That's you can, okay. You can scoot us back to this. No, I'll just leave it on this. No, it's ugly. I don't like it. Just get rid of the camera. But um, guys, the the thing about Redbubble is that it's insanely easy to use. Redbubble does everything for you. Basically, with Redbubble, you create a design. If you're if you do any type of graphic design, or honestly, there's a trend on Redbubble right now where the worst looking designs are what's selling. Just like Mark's like ugly bean mug. Um, Markla. Yeah. Call it, her by her name. It's it's like a trend right now for people who aren't good at graphic design, design or who don't, don't know graphic design, design to, to just, just throw, throw together the ugliest design that they possibly can on Redbubble and they're selling. So this is one of those things where you don't have to be a graphic designer to be nope. successful on Redbubble right now. Redbubble is just People love the craziest things. Um, but basically with Redbubble, what you do is you upload a design. You choose the products that you want that design on. You can do like shirts, bags, face masks, stickers, uh, acrylic blocks, wall art, posters, so many things, right? You choose what you want it put on and then you're done. You don't have to communicate with customers. You don't have to process orders. You can like log into a Redbubble account, upload a bunch of designs and walk away and literally never log back in and you will get paid. It's crazy. They do everything for you. They do customer communication. They, they do all the order processing. You have just given them a design to use and you make a little bit of money every time someone buys it. It is so easy. Um, I have been on Redbubble now for around seven or eight months, and I have made $30. I have sold around uh, 50 or 60 items, I think. And most of my items that have sold are stickers, and I only get 22 cents per sale. Um, your margins, Amber, do you know offhand what the margins are? They're very low. You will not make a lot of money per sale. So what I recommend if you decide to start a Red Bubble shop is if you've got like some really fancy designs, like you hand paint everything and you don't want to cheapen your brand, Red Bubble is not for you. If you make quick designs that you can easily make and you can make a lot of different ones, like you can just whip out a bunch of random designs and you don't care if you're only getting, ah, oh, if you only get paid 20 cents per design, then Redbubble is, is totally fine. Um, it, it's, it is just a free for all, but it's so easy. It's passive income. It's money that you wouldn't make otherwise. And it, it's it's just quick. Like I said, you don't have to log back into it. So it's a really neat little platform. And with this new data that we have with eRank, hopefully you can find some trends that you can use. use but, but don't, don't feel, feel like, like you need to do things, things that, that you, you see on this trend list. list. I don't. I don't. Um, I'm, I'm not, not going to talk, talk about you know the specifics of my Redbubble shop, shop because I don't want you to find it and mess up my numbers while I'm testing. Um, but it's a lot of fun. So. Maybe, maybe we'll let, let me know, know if you guys, guys want to do a red bubble episode. Amber sells on red bubble, and she maybe we could use her shop as an, uh, as an example. example. Did Amber say what the margins are? You, you can, can change, change your margin, margin minus 25 percent. Got it. Okay, so still, still not, not a lot. lot. You don't, don't, you don't make a lot of money on it. I use red bubble as a design dump. Yeah, if you guys not paid your electricity bill. Yes, we do. It's just uh, Elgato likes to make things that freeze up for no apparent reason. Yeah. All right. So um, let's pop back over to the screen share. Hopefully it doesn't mess it up when we try to. I'm just going to leave the faces on the screen. Nope. As soon as I change it, it freaks out. I'll mess. I'm just going to message Elgato when 
We get done. Fine. I'm getting sick of this. All right. So it's okay. They don't care. Don't worry about it. I do. There's no reason to stress. No, I'm not stressed. It's just when you pay $200 for an item, it should work as intended. Yeah, I know. It's frustrating. Target, guys. Target is my favorite place to look for trends. Uh, Target is big in the U.S. for those who don't have a Target. It is a grocery store. It is a clothing store. It is a home goods store. It has everything. And it's uh, it's all really trendy stuff. It's like when something is trending on Target, it's trending everywhere. And I highly recommend using Char Target um, even if you don't have a target in your area, just to identify trends, uh, trending patterns, trending colors, trending just themes, everything on target is like ahead of trends. And if it's trending on target, it's going to be trending everywhere. So when we go to targets, let's do the past 14 days. Halloween is number one. We can ignore PS5. We can ignore desk, paper, toilet paper, paper towels. Shower curtains. I know some of you guys sell shower curtains. Let's see if we can find something specific. Um, okay, so uh, the Hearth and Hand with Magnolia. This is a, um, it's a company. They do like very farmhouse type decor. Um, I'm not super familiar with it aside from just what I know going to Target and seeing their products, but it's all, you know, when you see those very like clean white farmhouse decor with like the eucalyptus and like sage colors, this tells me that that is a trending theme. So for those of you who do that farmhouse decor, this is a positive sign. Uh, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about you know, this particular brand, definitely Google it and check it out because I know a lot of you fall into that style and it, it's just a really good, you know, positive affirmation to see that this is trending. Um, let's see. Throw pillows, guys. I know a lot of you do throw pillows, floor lamps, candles are trending, fall decor is trending, hand soaps are trending, can see a lot of normal grocery items, which once again, we can kind of go past. Bra bras were hot yesterday, guys. Need a little support every now and then. <laughs> we can also see what's trending on, oop, on Walmart, which, you know, I don't really, most of it's going to be groceries and things like that. And Wayfair, which if you sell furniture and home goods, um, it might be interesting to see. I, I know a lot of Etsy sellers do make things like coffee tables and stuff. So it might be interesting to look through these. Um, the one thing that I do notice is that bar carts and bar items are pretty big. Bar stools, uh, barware. People, people are hosting again. Yeah. I noticed that Halloween barware was trending. So this is this might be good for you if you make any type of home decor to just kind of take a peek at. So... Here have been some really great ideas of these marketplaces. I think that the most valuable to us as Etsy sellers are going to be Etsy, Amazon Handmade, um, Pinterest for sure. Pinterest is the one that I recommend looking at the most for marketing, right? Because this helps us to come up with ideas for our actual marketing, not just for Pinterest, but for Instagram, you could use some of these ideas for Facebook, like the aesthetic ideas, doing like the full fall aesthetic photos. And I really want to use Target.com right now to kind of support some of the things that we found trending on Etsy, trending on Pinterest, and trending on Target. Because they all have very similar styles, right? Pinterest things that trend, Etsy things that trend, Target things that trend are all kind of the same. Deanna said Etsy just announced they're doing a partnership with Airbnb, WTF. Um, I'm assuming more than likely they're trying to find a way to hook people up with ways to like bulk. Because a lot of people that do Airbnb, they'll buy multiple houses that all need fully decorated. Ah, uh, yeah. So they're probably trying to give people the ability to decorate or maybe gifts for people that are staying at some of the Airbnbs. Like, who knows? I think it's a good idea. It gets it gets people that have a lot of money, obviously, hooked up with people who are trying to make money on Etsy. So I think I, it makes sense to me. Yeah, I've Airbnb, we've Airbnb, or not not specifically Airbnb, but we've done similar things like where we've gone to cabins that were all owned by the same people, and all the cabins were 
decorated almost exactly identically. exactly the same like a lot of the times if you if you ever stay in like gatlinburg if you stay in any of the cabins it's like two companies that own every cabin from gatlinburg and pigeon forge so you go there and almost all of them have the same blankets pillows beds mattresses they have all the same everything and and airbnb is the same way a lot of people don't realize that but most of the people that own airbnb they don't work for a company but they are like multi-millionaires that'll buy like 10 or 15 houses at a time and I would love to have the, them as customers. That sounds great. Yeah, that's that sounds like the perfect kind of customer for me, especially if they're trying to buy stuff that isn't just like the cheap crap that that uh, like big companies buy. Yeah. All right, guys. So Target, this is a great place to find trends. Most of you know how to find trends on Target already because I've talked about it. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to what's new. You're going to go to Target finds. And this is going to show you trending colors, trending textures, uh, trending products. And I don't just want you to look at the items that are for sale. I want you to pick up on the things that are in the background of the photos, the colors that they use for the backgrounds. Look here, engagement party ideas. How many of you sell wedding products? Look at the colors. This is all trending colors for weddings and, uh, and engagement parties. Take note of things like this. Take note of what's popular in these categories. If you do wedding invitations or uh, engagement party ideas or bachelorette party ideas, look, these, these foil balloons, letter Yay. balloons, yay they're trending you could do a greeting card or an invite with this print of the the big bubble balloons on the print so you got to really really look at these ideas and dive in um my favorite place personally to look at on the target finds page is the hashtag target style these are people who have posted on social media with the hashtag target style and this just kind of shows you what's trending and also how people are using certain products so for example okay succulents and a dinosaur and not just a dinosaur but a like solid colored funky purple dinosaur so this kind of tells me to maybe take note of dinosaurs maybe take note of fun succulent planners um even if you did something like greeting cards, you could probably do things like, you know, plant mom with a little dinosaur succulent planter print. Um, white nails and an engagement ring. This is this is interesting. Might be something to take note of if you do like weddings. Um, let's see. Seeing a lot of the same colors. We've got like golds. The terracottas are coming in pretty much the exact colors of the sweater that I'm wearing right now. You can kind of see the type of decor in the background. Yeah. See, look at that. You can see all kinds of things. The little pumpkins. We've got this crazy mirror, white pumpkins, white walls. Um, th th these are all clues, guys. You want to sniff around through here and just try to pick up on clues. Let's see. A lot of very similar homes. You can see these are Target customers, not just Target like the brand, but these are like Target markets. You can get a glimpse of what their homes are like. If you sell dog beds, here's a person who has a dog bed. It doesn't mean that you have to, you know, cater to, to this person who's obviously buying from Target, but you can get a glimpse of what someone who might buy your dog bed, what their home looks like, what's important to them. Um, Let's see. We've got cats and house plants, and, and you know what? I think that I kind of connect with that. Someone who who I saw that they have those cat boxes up at our Target. They do. They're scratch boxes. Let's see. We already have some holiday decor popping up. Look at these little guys, little plaid reindeer. Let's see. You can start to see how people are decorating for Halloween. Halloween crafts. You can see how they're doing their front doors. There's so many good ideas here that you can just kind of run with. I'm seeing a lot of consistent colors going it, on. It seems like their system is hooked directly to Instagram now because even the bad pictures are starting to make it over. <laughs> yeah. They probably curate it to get all the uh, the eggplants out. But let's, let's see. Is that a pressure cooker or a slow cooker? Uh, it looks like a rice cooker. Hard to tell. Look at this, look at this, this home. Look at this. 
There's like a basket with throw blankets, a little sign. I know a lot of sellers who make these little signs. If you did like fall, clean fall aesthetic on Pinterest and you put your little sign, but then you added like some eucalyptus to your photo and some little pumpkins, you could post that on Pinterest and then advertise your sign. They're, they're so almost, look, they, they're doing the same thing here. You want to buy the mirror? Here it is. You want to buy the pumpkins? Here they are. That's so interesting. Look at these beautiful photos, guys. All these different styles. You can see what colors people are gravitating towards, the natural wood. This, this is such a great idea to show you great ways to stage your photos. This one's beautiful. And if you sell a candle... You know, you throw your little candle into this photo and what do you know? You've got fall aesthetic, but you've also got a way to link your product to sell it. So use target finds to gather ideas. You don't have to make these products to be able to use a website like this to find ideas. This is really about thinking outside the box and gathering ideas based on what other people are interested in. It's like having a little spyglass to see what people are, are digging right now. And you can What's see, you digging? look at these colors. We've got like this, what, what color would you describe this as? Pete. mauve kind of and this kind of like off-white beige it's been really popular for a couple of years now too yeah like this beige color and little little plants and jars um i'm seeing like a lot of these vases ceramic vases very clean aesthetic is big both for for clothing and jewelry um as well as as home decor you even have some nail color ideas. I know we've got a couple alphas who make nail polish, but you can even use these colors for things that aren't nail polish. If you do stationery and greeting cards, take note of what's trending in nail polish for fall. I've noticed a lot of it has pulled since since pastel was big a couple of years ago. A lot of things are starting to pull from what pastel was, but like with the saturation turned down. Like they took pastel, turned the saturation to 75% and called it something different. Like but natural. This is all, this is, yeah, it's all very pastel. It's like natural colors, but taken, mm -hmm. you know, this is like a very naturally purple, a very naturally burgundy type color, mm -hmm. a very sage color. Lots of good ideas here. I, like I said, guys, I would juggle in between Pinterest, Etsy, and Amazon Handmade and a little bit of Target through E-Rank. And then I would pop over into Target Finds. Start advertising. Um, are we able to get on screen without it freezing? Or is it going to freeze? There you go. Oh, uh, is that all we can do? Yeah, because it keeps freezing. There's nothing I get unless you want me to keep plugging it in and unplugging it. Um, I'm done screen sharing all together, so. Okay. We can... yeah. Let me see if I can't bring this around and put it at my keyboard. That way I can at least do the process faster. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, muted colors. That's that's a, a good way to describe it. But begin thinking about how you can start marketing. Because honestly, guys, holiday shopping has already started. I know that you know most of you probably have not started holiday shopping. I certainly haven't. I'm not even ready to think about it. But there are a lot of people who are really motivated early, 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 and they want to shop now. So even if you, you know, even if you are you don't feel like you're fully ready, maybe you still have some things that you want to list. Start, start marketing, marketing the, the things, things that you have. have. Start, start marketing, marketing the products that you have available. available. Start, start creating beautiful, beautiful photos of those products and getting them onto platforms like Pinterest, like Instagram, and especially like Instagram Reels, which is what I talked about a few weeks ago in our How to Make an Instagram Reel video. Um, Instagram reels are still doing phenomenally well. I'm going to keep an eye on them because I really, really want to see if this is the, if this stays like the best way to advertise. But I've noticed over just the last few months, the Instagram reels are the best way to find new people. Uh, the reason for that is because Instagram reels get shown to people who aren't following you. Normally with Instagram and with Facebook, people have to already be following you to see the things that you post and to see that content. 
But with Instagram Reels, as long as you're using hashtags and keywords that are related to what they normally search for and what they're interested in, um, you're going to be shown to those individuals. So just make sure that you're using keywords that kind of focus more on the target customer and less about, about you know, you precisely know, what you sell. Precisely what you sell. Did you get it? Sell. No. Did you get it? Don't worry about it anymore. That's fine. It's it's messed up my uh my GoPro. I now have to factory reset my GoPro again. That's fine. You want to uh give us yeah. Okay. So you guys get Starla's funny bean face. That's okay. Um you want to start reading some some questions? There aren't any. What? Yes. Get your questions in, y'all. Yeah, guys. Uh, I'm starting this factory reset process because it takes a long time. It's fine. That's fine. We are on our third taco truck cat scratcher from Target. I thought about buying one from our for our cats, but they'll just rip it up and make a mess everywhere. So let's see. Love those fabric pumpkins. My rabbits would rip apart the twine pumpkin in seconds. Our cats would too. Our cats, anything twine, they they rip up. Let's see. Light peach. Oh my god, just bought my Smarkla mug. Thank you. Yuck. Um guys, you only have until like Sunday night if you want the ugly bean mug. I'm getting rid of it after then. Maybe we'll introduce it someday on like a sticker or something, but we're not doing mugs again. This is the last time you'll be able to, to get a mug specifically. I'm sure he'll make me put it on something else at some point. Um, oh, so, yeah, absolutely. So if <laughs> I'm not doing a T-shirt. Nobody will buy it. Nobody yeah. wants Nobody wants a T-shirt. I do. Maybe a sticker because a sticker is like, you know, you can stick it on something and then you can just throw that something away when you don't need it anymore. Yep. Because it's ugly. It's an ugly mug. Don't know if you answered me earlier. Is Cottagecore for Christmas trending anywhere? I'm sure it will be. Cottage tor Cottagecore is trending so much that Facebook even has a chat skin called Cottagecore. Yep. Um, so I, I definitely think it's going to, to stay trending. That's it, It's just kind of been trending for the last year. So I don't see it going anywhere. Not anytime soon, at least. Cut off again. The more you hate it, the more you want it. Yeah, that's how it is. Y'all get your questions in if Linda you want questions and answers. Let's see here. Do reels need to be live? No, 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 no. Reels are not live. Uh, like I said, go watch my how to make an Instagram reel video. And I show you how I how I make one really, really quickly using Canva. Um, but no, they, they don't need to be live. They don't even need to be videos. They can be a photo slideshow. I just recommend using Canva because you can add cool effects, even if you only have a free membership. It's a lot of fun. Let's see. She needs to be a stuffed bean pal. No. That would be wonderful. No way. I would absolutely love that. If one of our alphas makes plushies and would volunteer to do it, and we can make sure that they get paid for it. That way we're not like profiting off of their work. I would be willing to sign over rights of the uh, ugly bean, but I could not promise that alpha that it would sell because I certainly wouldn't want one in my house. I don't even know why you guys would want the mug in your house, but you know, no judgment. You know how it is. I think that some of you are just buying that mug to out of spite because you know I hate it so much. <laughs> Let's see. I have some connections. If no alphas make it, I'll send it to you. I don't want it. I don't want the ugly bean. Oh, God. If we don't get no questions, I'm going to cut the stream off. Let us know, guys. You've Come got. On. They don't got to be about the topic we did today. Somebody get your questions in. There's 136 of you here. I know somebody's got a question. Uh, don't be shy. She shall exist. She is. They is inevitable. Ugly is the new beautiful. Oh, God. I hate it. I hate it so much. We actually. Um, let me see how many people actually, uh, I guess I can't. I don't think I can because I'm not logged into that Etsy shop on my phone. 
Let's see. Have you got next week top next week's topic planned? I don't. Nope, we sure don't. We, we usually plan it uh, about 16 hours before we do it. That's true. I do not plan these topics ahead at all. Um, let's see. Why? Why, why do we get found for brand name when we're not related to it at all? Are you getting found for a specific brand name? Let me know. I don't find that entirely to be a bad thing either. No, if it's, I mean, if it's, well, it depends on what the brand name is. Are you, are you getting found for a brand name on Etsy? Let me know. I'm, I'm curious about that. Uh, are you going to be doing a sales coupons tactics for Black Friday? In the Alpha Dapt shop? I'm not sure. Um, our margins are already set kind of low. So we probably won't only because we don't really, oh, did you do it? We already don't make a, I mean, we don't make any money. We give that to Amber because she's saving to come to the United States to, to visit us. Um, all froze up. But we'll probably do some exclusive products that you'll only be able to get for Black Friday. Oh, she's being found for Kipling. Oh. Couldn't tell you. No idea. Maybe, you know. It's got to be a thing. You could reach out to Etsy and ask. That's very interesting. Yeah, because the thing is, that if it's not coming up for us. It could be like a foreign thing. Maybe you got shared somewhere. How do you come up with topics for your social media? What do you mean specifically? Um, I would, if you're asking me how to come up with topics, I would go based on what's trending with my target market. What are they interested in right now? Uh, I just showed you how to do that, how to how to explore what they find to be interesting. You can use E-Rank for that. You can see the types of things that they're searching for and what's trendy. And then I would just try to align my social media marketing with those things. If I, you know, notice that, I don't know, if I notice that little pumpkins, little pumpkin home decor is trending and I make little wooden signs, I might take a picture of my little wooden sign with a bunch of little pumpkins around it just because pumpkins are trending and I can fit that in without necessarily making pumpkins myself. I can use those in the photos that I stage. Can you go over how to do a Pinterest post? When I make one, my description text usually never shows up on the final post, especially when I add a link to my shop hand um i can't actually recall i would need to be looking at the screen but maybe we could do one of those episodes in the future um i am not phenomenal with pinterest marketing it is not my go-to i i'm more honed in on instagram it's never been our target market yeah that's i've never my target market's never really existed on pinterest but maybe we could kind of look into it yes Supply issues. Buy everything now. Supplies and shipping stuff and take uh, the chance that we'll use it. That's entirely up to you. I would definitely make sure that you have a little more than you think you'll need. For sure. Um, because when things run out, especially around the holidays, they run out. And the last thing that you want is to like be with Like everywhere. Yeah. Especially if you have a like a very specific size of like envelope or something that you need and you end up running out like it always at least for us, it was always like we couldn't get them at the store. We couldn't get them on Amazon. The only place we could get them was eBay and it was like a 30 to 45 day wait. Yeah. So, when things run out, it it can be chaotic. We're not we're not going to say that like you need it. We don't know you. We don't know what your audience is going to do, but. I, it, it, it's the worst case scenario, you end up with a bunch of packing supplies that you can use throughout the following year. Whimsical Muse. Uh, how would you start marketing for a brand new shop that has not gotten off of the ground? Would you concentrate on uh, Huminsta or Facebook? I don't know. What... Instagram. Oh. I assume you mean Instagram. Yeah. Uh, inst I would focus. I mean, I would make sure that I have my Facebook page claimed. Um, but I would focus on platforms where you can gain an audience. Facebook is not going to help you to gain a new audience because your, your posts on Facebook are only going to be shown to those who happen to be either following you or randomly stumble across you. It's really hard to randomly stumble across Facebook pages, though. 
with Instagram, uh, as long as you're using reels, you can, I, I mean, it's literally like a fishing reel. You can toss your reel out into the water and, uh, you know, kind of wait for people to find it organically and follow you. I would start with Instagram and I would also begin following people who, you know, look like your target customers who might be interested in your products and just start, you know, start talking to people, be, be a social, it's social media, not market media. If you find a, a person on Instagram who looks like they would love your products, go to their Instagram account and don't say, hey, buy my products, but say, wow, I love your earrings. Those are beautiful. Where did you get them? Uh, start genuine conversations with them and try to be their friends. Question about selling a fabric bag I bought as an add-on to women's, I don't know what that word is, yarm yarmulks? Uh, yarmulkes? I don't, I don't know what word that is. Can I sell it if it's not handmade? No. If you're selling it by itself, no. No, you can't. You can't sell it. Any, there's no way that you can sell it. If you did not make it or you're not working through a, uh, a Etsy like partner, um, for example, we work through a partner for Alphadapt. We actually run through through two partners, Printful and Printed Mint. Um, but if you're not working directly through a partner, no, you can't. Um, what I would recommend is if you want to offer something like that, work with an Etsy integrated partner and design a bag through them. I know that you can do bags through Printed Mint. And you can do bags through Printful, and they are Etsy approved partners. Uh, and then you just upload your design and and do it that way as a print on demand product. I literally cannot figure out how to use Pinterest. Do you have videos on it? A few other people have commented. There's like a bajillion videos on YouTube. You can look how to how to use Pinterest. A couple people recommended some decent places to find some. Yeah, I'm not. I'm definitely not a Pinterest expert. Um, I I can't be the expert of of all things as much as I wish that I, as much as I wish that I was, I'm more honed in on Instagram specifically. Uh, but there are so many people. And if you guys have like Pinterest experts that you really look up to, feel free to put their names or their, their, you know, their channel name in the comments. What if you know slash understand nothing about your target market? Then you should spend a lot of time figuring out more about them. That should be your first step. You cannot you sell a lot about that in Handmade Alpha Academy. Yeah, you cannot sell to someone that you know absolutely nothing about. You need to know what's important to them, what their lifestyle looks like, what are their morals, ethics, and values. Uh, what what is their overall design sense and style and. Uh, approximately how much money do they make? I know that that doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you make gold and diamond encrusted cell phone cases and your target audience is a college girl who works at Starbucks on the weekend, you know, that's all cool and well. She would probably love one of those cell phone cases, but she likely couldn't afford one. So you also need to make sure that you are, you have an idea of how much money that person makes. Um, and, and what type of lifestyle they have. So you can make sure that your target customer is, realistic there was a oh that was a, okay do you think etsy will ever give us more incentives to buy from other etsy sellers no no probably not no absolutely not not um, the job no that's that doesn't they're they the i don't know what the purpose of i mean i get like camaraderie i guess there's no motivation for Etsy to do that, though. And I think that most Etsy sellers probably already buy on Etsy. So there's not really a reason to incentivize it. It just doesn't. I've never even heard that idea before. Um, but I don't see that ever being a thing. It would be cool. I'd love to get incentivized for buying from other sellers. But I've never really been incentivized for buying anything. It's a seller's job to kind of incentivize their repeat buyers. Right. Have you ever placed an ad in Facebook, et cetera, or has it all been organic? Oh, we've used Facebook ads in the past. Yeah, yeah. I've used a lot of Facebook ads. I've experimented with all kinds of things. I've done boosted posts. I've done I've done ads. Um, I have not done ads in a couple of years, though. I think that the last ad I did was for your band, actually, mm -hmm. for your show. Um, one thing that I will say about advertising is just make sure that you're choosing the right targeting. Uh, target people who are interested in things that are kind of related to your brand, but I would also target things that are related to their lifestyle as well. 
Yeah. Uh, you've probably experienced it if you have Facebook, if you've ever gone on Facebook and gotten an ad for something that like is unrelated to anything you've ever searched for and anything you've ever talked about, like input, like there's no reason you should be getting an ad for this weird product. It's because somebody targeted you in, in an incorrect way. It could be a language barrier thing, could just be the person just oop, clicking literally every option possible in order to be able to hit as many people as possible. Yeah, and Beige Bird Studio said so, or Facebook ads a bus. No, I'm talking about Facebook posts when you just post on your page. It's not being seen by people who haven't liked your page. Ads are shown to pe all different people. The, would you recommend a gift wrapping as a single listing or as an add-on for every one of your listings? The latter sounds daunting for me, but easier for the customer. Excuse me. People aren't going to go to your... If they're just shopping and browsing from an Etsy search page, they're not going to go to your shop to see if you have gift wrapping. But if you have it already attached to the listing, they're more likely to select it. If you want people to select it, I would do it that way. I wouldn't do it as a separate listing. Um, I also recommend even if they don't, like maybe have a premium gift wrapping option that they pay for. Uh, but I would also recommend making sure that your packages have a, you know, just a moderate amount of, of nice packaging to begin with. Uh, I gift wrapped all my orders and I didn't include it as a paid add on. I just, mm -hmm. I just did it because it helped to. And, and people aren't going to read your descriptions of your products 99% of the time. So putting down there that they can add gift wrapping by adding a listing, that's not going to help either. Yeah. So you, if you're going to add it into your listings and add on is that's fine. Yeah. I would do it in the, as a very variation. It's daunting, but it's one of those things that once you do it up, every time you post new things, you can just have it set in advance. Yeah, and imagine if everybody who places an order from now on selects it and you make a couple extra dollars per yep. sale. A couple, like, bu couple bucks is nice. How far in advance do you create your product before starting marketing or release it in your Etsy slash social? You should have your product created before you start marketing it. Like, always. Yeah. In my in my personal opinion, you should never market something that you haven't per or that you haven't like made, made yet, because that usually means that you probably don't have the supplies for it yet, and that just creates situations where you end up not being able to get a product finished, and you have to apologize to your audience and push things back. Just just don't do that. You could do like work in progress photos, like yeah, while you're making funny. it. That's good advertising. Um. You could tease the name of a collection that's upcoming, yeah. and and even if you don't have the products all made, just the name of the collection. Just no specific products. Yeah, I would I would uh, hold off on that. But when it comes to like how soon you can market, I see brands that will market for six months before a product is available. I've been telling you guys about the book that I wrote now for several months, mm -hmm. and it's not even going to be out until January, um, guys. Follow my Instagram at Explore the Channel uh, and visit explorethechannel.com. I have a sci-fi book coming out, and I really need your guys' support. I, I'm this is my passion project, and I could use all the love in the world to to put this baby out where everybody can judge it. Uh, Linda had a follow up to that. What if you offered a pre order for items? I uh, don't like the idea of pre orders on Etsy. I don't, I don't, I, it's a personal thing, but I, I don't like that idea. Um, I think it just depends. Just make sure you have all the things ready to make the products. I guess that that would be okay. And would... how far out the pre-order is going to be as well. Like if you're going to do a pre-order, at least make sure that you've got supplies to make the product that you're going to be making in that pre-order. Um, and also consider shipping timelines, because once people place that, that shipping timeline is still going to be in place. And if you've got a bunch of listings sitting in there and you don't have the supplies for it and things have to ship like three weeks past their ship date, Etsy's probably not going to like that very much. So just be careful with that. Just, just know what your capabilities are and expect the best. Not, I mean, Plan for the worst and expect the best. Yeah. How far in, in advance do you plan new product releases? Usually, I mean... That's a very personal thing, I think. Yeah, uh, I would say that you should start planning a, a product line four months before the season. So it just depends on how often you're launching. If you're assuming you're doing a seasonal launch, which is four collections a year, um, I would say to to make sure that you're planned out at least four months in advance. I mean, es essentially just like 
you should already be starting to plan by the time that like previous season stuff is releasing. Like if you're releasing your summer collection, you should already be thinking about what you're going to be doing for your fall collection. You don't necessarily have to have like pro specific product ideas, but you should at least be starting to think about it at that time. I mean, guys, it is September and we just showed you that people are shopping for Christmas gifts now. Yup. So how many months is that? September, October, November, December. That's four months until, until Christmas. So I would definitely plan three to four months in advance for, for every holiday and, and season. Participate in the forum in positive ways. I think people do buy from each other and get to know each other there, but be aware there are some, are some negative people. Yeah, if you can't handle negativity, stay out of the Etsy forums. Oh, God. I, I can't even look at the Etsy forums, guys. There And there's so much misinformation that goes around in there. There's a lot of... there There is good. It's not all bad, but there's a lot of false information that gets spread just because sellers don't know any better you know i've been doing it this way forever right i've been selling mickey mouse stuff in my shop for years and i've never gotten in trouble <laughs> until they do yeah, and fad diets are fad diets until somebody dies from it right yep <laughs> poshmark encourages sellers to buy from other sellers but that's not incentivizing incentivizing is different yeah i mean it's that's i mean Etsy, I mean, it, realistically, having a section specifically for supplies is Etsy encouraging sellers to buy from other sellers. Uh, how often do you need to work slash massage listings in your shop to be found in search? Do you need to do it daily, weekly? No, no, don't do don't don't continuously tweak a listing. It takes it takes 60 to 90 days when you make your tag and title changes for Etsy to even register those. If you're going in there every week and messing with them, you're just going to keep refreshing the system. And that listing is going to, it's going to be really hard for that listing to climb and rank. Register that, is the wrong word. Yeah. It's, there's no real word for the algorithm to really take hold of take the change. Full, take full effect. Yeah. It'll register it immediately, but yeah. for it to actually take full effect, it takes 60 to 90 days. Yeah. So when you make changes on Etsy for one, do your changes slow, one listing at a time, very, very slowly. Monitor it for a few weeks. That's why I've been I've been talking since like spring about you guys getting your listings prepped for the holidays because now we're getting to that point where it's kind of too late. Because if you're doing one at a time, you don't have 60 to 90 days for each. If you've got 20 listings to edit and before the holidays, you're going to run out of time. Um, so only edit listings that aren't performing. Only edit listings that are not selling, right? You don't want to you don't want to touch bestsellers at all because you can mess up your listing quality scores. Only do them slowly, one at a time, and make sure that you're using eRank's track changes tool to see how the changes that you've made to your listings have affected your views, favorites, and sales. Because you'll never know if the changes that you made are good or bad if you don't track them. Um, and, and my last little bit is that don't don't go in and constantly change the same listing make changes and then let it sit for at least 60 to 90 days because likely when you make those changes it'll tank the listing it'll fall in search and then it'll have that potential to rise back up but it's a very slow going it's one of those things that you have to be very patient with so no no massaging the listings I'm getting ads for tooth whitening strips for men. Yeah, what are, what are what are men specific? So it's one of those things where like we still live in a very like masculine to the level of toxicity society, and guys don't like doing things to like improve themselves. Right. So like having them specifically marketed towards men ensures that men actually buy the things, and women are just going to buy them anyway and call it stupid. Let's see. Last week's episode had a lot of nuggets on holiday pre-launch marketing. I listed three times. Listened. I'm assuming. Some. Let's see. Sorry that today's uh, stream wasn't as good as last week's. Our camera decided to fart out on Our us. Camera did it last week too. Now you can't see my pretty makeup that I spent all morning doing. Darn it. Let's see. Yeah, I know. I need. We just need to get us a. We need to get our Lumix camera and just be done with it. I hate spending money on equipment. I get frustrated sometimes with Etsy, uh, but I don't get why some are so hostile over silly things like fees. Try selling things in a local shop where they want 50 to 60% of your sales. I know it's like you get frustrated at Etsy for taking like a small percentage and then like you don't yell at the government for taking 35% of your income at the end of the year. <laughs> the thing is Etsy's a business too, guys, and Etsy's going to grow and, you know, we can, we can either complain 
and and moan about it, or we can plan, which mm-hmm. means adapt. You know, yes, plan, adapt, evolve. That's what we we say in Handmade Alpha Academy. You plan for changes, you adapt to changes, and you evolve so that you can move with those changes. Uh, and I always use this. Uh, this little analogy, but if we took an expert salesman from the sixties, he was the top of his game. He was, he could sell anything, right? You took this expert salesman and you put him in 2021, he would be a miserable excuse for a salesman. He would not be able to sell anything. Yeah. And the reason for that is because somebody from the sixties would not be adapted to sell in 2021. He wouldn't know how to sell based on today's standards. If you don't move with the tide, you will get left behind. That's why we do these every Friday so that we can keep helping you. We can tell you what's hot, what the new thing is. Uh, And when I tell you that something's new and you need to jump on it, I really hope that you're listening. That's why, like, right when I found out about Instagram Reels going more viral than TikTok, I was like, okay, this is something that the alphas need to start doing. This is something that they need to start doing now so that they can build holiday momentum. And if you start today, if you just start making those reels today and getting a couple out a week, you're going to start seeing a trickle of new followers. Talk about misinfos. Uh, Someone goofy said that the 16 to 90 day thing was a myth in the community group. It's in Etsy's seller handbook. Yeah. But then there's also people who say, don't believe what Etsy says. They lie. I'm like, that's illegal, actually. Yeah, that's against the law. They can't do that. Let's see. My previous business coach taught that Etsy listings should be renewed every day. Well, they were wrong. Uh, I mean, paying 20 cents every day per listing. That was correct like 10 years ago. Yep. That, that was a thing back when Etsy's algorithm was new and not developed yet. Why would Etsy lie? They want us to make sales. Yeah, I know that's people are stupid. Anyway, um, it, it's it's just not true anymore. Don't renew your listings every day. You're wasting your money. It's not doing anything. It's that you're just giving Etsy money, which I'm sure they're happy about. They're probably not going to knock you too much for it, but you're wasting your money. Yeah, I've actually got a uh, I've got an Etsy video on my channel from last year called uh, Don't Burn Your Etsy SEO. And it covers that exactly. That is an insanely dangerous tactic um, because it can actually kill your listing quality score because basically what you're doing is you're telling Etsy, despite the fact that my listing is renewing every day, it's still not selling. People people are so not in love with this listing. This listing is so unwanted that even though I'm renewing it every day, nobody's buying it. That is not a good look to have. And Etsy is just going to push you further and further and yeah. further back. So don't do that. Um, I And this is speaking from all my experience working at E-Rank, working closely with Anthony Wolf, CEO of E-Rank. Don't, don't do that, please. Uh, my husband actually bought dude wipes. We already had Equate flushable wipes. I got dude wipes. I got dude wipes upstairs. I like supporting smaller companies. Well, I, they were a smaller company. I like supporting smaller companies. That way there's a much smaller chance that I'm supporting a sweatshop somewhere. Let's see. I'm happy E-Rank has Redbubble on there now. I can tag up my listings on there better. Yep. Yeah, because getting doing tags on Redbubble was very hard. That's why I told Anthony. I'm like, can we get this data? Because I, when I was doing my Redbubble account, I could not find anything. And I just used Etsy keyword data for Redbubble because I figured it would be close to the same. But now that I'm looking at the data, it's not. <laughs> What if Etsy support is not answering you? Keep contacting them. How often? I mean, how long are you giving them between asking them a question? I mean, it could, it could take them two to three days to get back to you. The, how many sellers are on there now? A lot. But um, there are different phone numbers. There are. I would try calling them. Calling them is usually the best way to try to get a hold of them. And call you different. You cannot find their phone number on their website. You'll have to get it from somebody else. You Google it. Just Google Etsy phone number. You'll usually find Reddit threads and things where people have posted it. It's um, like two weeks, no answers. C- just continue reaching out. Uh, yeah, I would I would give the phone call option a try. You might have to try five or six phone numbers before you get the right one. But, but eventually <laughs> you'll get to a person. Yeah. It can just be a pain in the butt. Yeah. They're I mean, not- and if you're asking a question that's like something that's just like right in the Etsy seller handbook, that might be why they're not answering you. Their customer service is doo-doo. I, I am not a fan of Etsy customer service at all. They need to hire more people. 
Let's see. What are your thoughts on making two of the same listings in the same product because it sells well? You could do that in one shot, but there's no point in doing two listings for the same product just because it sells well. It would be better to have, if it sells well, it would be better to have it in one listing because you'd be able to build a, a great listing quality score for one listing rather than splitting that in two and having two, you know, kind of okay listing quality scores, you would have one great listing quality score. Yep. The more sales, the more reviews, the more clicks, the more organic finds and search that, you know, you get for that singular listing, the higher that listing quality score will be and the more likely it is that that listing will be found. Now, if you do want to experiment, maybe you, you've got some keywords and you want to use them in the same listing, but you don't want to touch, you know, one of your listings because it's selling really well, you could totally make a copy of that listing and, and then test new keywords in that, uh, that in that copy. Um, that's fine, but I wouldn't double list products, not to mention as a buyer, that would be frustrating if I'm trying to explore your shop. and Because I'd be looking at them trying to see what the difference between the two is. I've actually done that before yeah. where people will post the same thing twice whether on purpose or by accident, I don't know. But I'm trying to see, like, are they different sized? Are they different colors? Is there, like, is there, a, you know, you know how it is. And if someone can't figure it out, they might choose to just not buy yeah, from you because... It can, it can frustrate people. Anything to frustrate people should be avoided as much as possible. Uh, renewing listings should not do. So what, it, what can be done to make products visible? SEO. SEO. Uh, after you make SEO changes, after you make a big change, if you want Etsy to notice that change, it's totally fine to renew your listing. It just kind of tells Etsy like, hey, I made a change. I want you to I want you to check it out. I want you to index me for these changes that I've made. You can totally do that. Just as long as you're not doing it to every listing every day, all the time, forever. Um, because that's not how you run experiments. That's not how you test. And that's not how you get recognized by the system. Uh, it's fine to do it every once in a while. Getting noticed by Etsy is not a mystery. We know how it works. You build a listing quality score. There are seven factors that contribute to your listing quality score. The, re the recency in which it was listed can help to give you an initial boost. Uh, the SEO, so the keywords, tags that you're using. Your attributes, which are all the little categories and drop down menus that you fill out when you're creating your listing. Uh, all the, you know, the size, material, color, what's the occasion, what's it for, who's it for filling those out, um, the overall completion of your shop. So making sure that your policies is filled out, your about section, um, your past sales history of that listing. This is why one-of-a-kind listings tend to not do as well on Etsy because there's no ability for people to buy that listing over and over again. The reviews on that listing. So whether or not people have enjoyed the listing after they have purchased it. And also... Um, Oh, crap. What was the last one? Uh, translations. So if you are trying to cater your products to a different language, doing the translations yourself rather than relying solely on Etsy's translations, because yours will always be better than Etsy's. And um, yeah, and, and, you know, relevancy, making sure that your keywords are, are appropriate. And then obviously, you know, you're good standing with Etsy making sure that you're not getting in trouble, you're shipping on time, you're not getting a bunch of bad reviews, you don't have cases against you and things like that. But all of these things together uh, help to build listing quality scores. This is the score for your listing that is going to help propel it higher in search because it's going to tell Etsy that people are interested in this item. And it takes a lot of time to gather this kind of data. Etsy has to be able to monitor who's, how many people are finding this listing organically in search, how many people are buying it. How many people are finding it in search and and you know and and leaving a review after they purchase it? They're keeping track of these things to see how people engage with this listing. That way they can decide how high they place it in search. That's how you get it's not that you're not getting found by Etsy, you're listed on Etsy. Of course you're found by Etsy. You're there. If you're selling there, you're found. You want to get found by shoppers. And the way to do that is to get Etsy to recommend you. And the way to get Etsy to re recommend you higher in search is to make sure that you are building listing quality scores, which takes time and patience. You will never be on the very, very like top of Etsy when you first list a brand new product. Nope. That's why we say 30 or 60 to 90 days. Let's see if there's any more questions because we got to be wrapping it up. 
Oh, uh, thank you. Bell here did post the phone, two different phone numbers that she found for Etsy customer service. Perfect. If you need it. Write it down, guys. Hello, Mallory said, what's on the horizon for HAA? Anything new brewing? HAA will be opening uh, for December enrollment on December 1st. For those who don't know, that's my handmade Alpha Academy. We have over 600 students now, many of which do Etsy full time after taking HAA. Um, Oh, we are actually next year. We will be re-recording the entire program. We and were going to do it this year, but we're waiting on. I need to get a better interface with some better preamps. We're trying to do everything top shelf this time around, so recording everything in 4K and kind of improving it that way. And yeah, then... it's it's not a change in content. It's just the the you know the video will be a little crisper. The my voice will sound a little better. But for those who enroll this December, you're gonna get like the old version of the course and the new version of the course because you get all updates. I update. hate calling them that because they're gonna be the same thing. Just yeah. a couple of small updates. Yeah, but you're gonna get like old version and fresh version. You get retro and new. So yes. you guys are gonna be the super lucky ones who get both, whereas people who enroll afterwards they'll just always get the new version the 2.0 um but yes. I'm, I'm sure that we'll that we'll add in some extra stuff we always we always do i'm not quite sure what yet i've got a couple ideas amber marie has a couple ideas for things that she wanted to i mean have. even just just re-recording the current material as a couple hundred hours worth of work between the two of us between we're actually recording the video content me editing all the audio for the content content oh, piecing yeah. it all together like it's a couple hundred hours worth of work so yeah but I think that's that's all we had for questions. All right, guys, if you want an example of some really cool marketing, some pre-marketing, um, I, I know that it's not a handmade product, but I run so many Instagram accounts and the one that I'm dedicating the most time into right now is for my book. And I'm also gonna be doing merch for my book. And you don't have to be interested in my book. You don't have to buy my book if it's not your thing. But if you want to see how I pre-market a book, how I advertise it, how I create reels for it, how I get people excited about it, check out my Instagram account over there. It is explore the channel. Mark is going to type that into the chat um, and, and check out what I've been doing. I actually just posted a pretty cool video reel uh, or a story yesterday um, for that. And then... Amber and I also have a podcast. This is the first episode that I'm going to mention it because now we are in the top 10% of all podcasts on the web. That's insane to me. Uh, but it's based on Tracy Wolf's Crave series, which is a vampire romance. The podcast is called Crave the Book. If you're not interested in that book series, you will not be interested in this podcast because it is all about it. But if it's something that you want to check out, uh, we are on Spotify. We You can ask Amazon, Alexa, Google Home. You can ask, you know, your Echo mm -hmm. to play us or on YouTube. Uh, feel free to check that out as well. Um, and then the Friday Bean Collection, guys, that's available now in the Alpha Dap Shop. The Ugly Bean Mug is only going to be available for the weekend. So down below in the description, you'll find the link to Alpha Dap if you want to get the Ugly Bean Mug. For those who are on the Alpha Dap specific email list, I did some really funny marketing that you're going to be getting at 2 o'clock today, which is in 30 minutes. Uh, so keep an eye out for an email from me and an email from Mark. And then I think that that's it. Is this right? That's pretty much it there. I did find a pretty cool tool that I, I I mainly use it for lights and things in the house, but it is an it's a color converter where you can input any color combination that you have, whether that's R, RGB, HSB, HSL, all the different types of colors that you want. Hex code. Hex code, any, literally anything, and convert them to anything else, and it does it automatically for you. And if you have a specific color that you're trying to share with someone, you can also do up the color and then click a little permalink thing and actually send them the link for it. So I'm just, I'm going to link that. It's not, not super huge, but it's a good way to, uh, it's a good way to convert things if you have to, if you have to use different things. And then there's also, um, this website that I use quite a bit called Color Hex. These are great for, for styling, for knowing hex codes for trendy products. Uh, if you work with graphic designers, being able to send them the exact, rather than saying, yo, can you, can you do this in like a light green? You can say, hey, can you do this in uh, hex, uh, in this hex code? Yeah. And, and you can send them the exact color that you want. And then here's another website that I use called Color Hex. You can go to the website and literally just kind of pick a color. They throw out a whole bunch of like favorite colors. 
Uh, at the top, there's different palettes and things that you can do. I'm actually good just because we have a minute. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this up on screen and show this too. Sure. That's fine. Um, you guys want to check it out? Yeah, this is a website that I use pretty often. Uh, where's my screen share? There it is. Nope, no face. Okay, so this website's pretty neat. You can open up things. This is like just picking gray as a favorite color, and then it gives you every shade. There are different colors, and then it gives you all their different RGB spaces for them. So go back to the main page. You can go to, come on, palettes. So if you're looking Ooh. for different color palettes to find, you can like, here's a cyberpunk retro wave. You can go in, then it gives you all the different colors. And if I was going to take that, let's say go to the color converter, and then you can just pop in whatever, whatever number you want here. And then it automatically converts all the digits for you. I don't know if that's useful for anybody, but it's a tool that I've been using recently for a lot of but different Go back stuff. to the palettes. Go back. Yeah. Go back one. Yeah. This would be a really fun idea to find how like color combos for things like stationary, um, for graphic design, for mm -hmm. your logo. If you're trying to rebrand, you could find some really fun inspiration. If yeah. you're like, if you're like, man, I don't know what color I want. And that's how that's how I do. Um, I've actually just got it bookmarked. All the colors that I use for my computers and the lighting in the basement. I have all like the different cyberpunk colors that I use. But you can just go up there and type things in. Yeah, that worked. Probably not going to work for me today. No, it's not because it's being goofy. But anyway. Yeah, you can go in here and find all kind of cool stuff. And this is stuff that, like, if you go in here, a lot of big companies use this. So you'll see a lot of familiar colors in here. You've got all the different shades, all the way from black, tints. It's got the different cool. percentages. Literally anything that you could want to use this for here. you got CSS3 samples. Like, if you're coding, CSS color codes. Like, this this website's dope. Okay. All right. That's fun. Yep. All right, guys, and you can also use those colors um in your like in your emails and things. If you uh if you want to if you're like using Mailchimp, you can make sure that you're using cool branding colors for your font and things as well. And yeah. there's I posted the link to both of those in the uh, chat here. Color color hacks and then work with color. And you can paste those colors right into Canva too. Uh, mm -hmm. when you like click on your fonts or if you want to do shapes and things, you can And if they're not if they're not quite accurate, you can go over and put them into the editor. And then once you put them into the editor, you can edit whatever color just to kind of slightly adjust it. Like if you need a couple more points of red, you can up it and then you can to take the whole like hex code or whatever and move it over. Anyway, we love you guys and we will see you next week. Bye guys.